in all of college softball, Kiki Malloy, one of the National Player of the Year finalists from a season ago. As we take a look at the Tennessee starting lineup, a player that you'll also want to keep your eye on, Zeta Pooney, who was terrific last year. Riley West has also made her mark already this season. She's due up next. This Tennessee lineup is a, a scary lineup when you look at it top to bottom because of just the power in the speed that they have left and right. You have players like Riley West stepping up the way that she has so far to start the season. Power with McKenna Gibson and of course Kiki Malloy starting it off. Swing and a miss, it's a 2-2 two -two count to Malloy, who you mentioned closing in on that all-time career home run record. And she's back for another year with the SEC champions who reign as Reagan Krause wins the opening matchup here as she strikes out Malloy. Good start to the game for Reagan Krause. The biggest key for her in this ball game too is staying around the strike zone. Not too much over the plate, but you want to really just get right at the corners. Does a nice job spinning that pitch. That late movement is what got her that first strikeout. Krauss will try to build on that as she faces off against Riley West, the left fielder for the Lady Balls, who we highlighted just a moment ago in that starting lineup for Tennessee. Six hits this season, five of them for extra bases. And when you see Reagan Krauss going right to work here, trying to make sure these Lady Balls chase and swing at pitches. She's fired up early on. And one ball and two strike now. I like the way that she's locating those pitches low in the zone, right there at the knees, right on the corners. Not a pitch that you want to go after if you're a hitter in a 1-1 count, but a great pitcher's pitch. 1-2 and Riley West fouls it off. You've seen Riley West continue to grow in her career at Tennessee. And the first thing that I noticed with her swing this year is that it's just a little bit quieter. Her, her load doesn't have as much movement to it. She seems to be more consistently on time with her swings. And ball high, now even two and two. West from the 49er State out of California. 2-2 two, two to Riley West, swing and pops it up to shortstop. And so this is what is in store for the Lady Vols with Reagan Kraus in the circle for Stanford. Kraus is going to have a little bit of everything. She's got a ton of different pitches that she's going to throw at you. She's got a rise ball, which we've seen already. She'll throw it in the low to mid-60s. She's going to throw that rise ball with command to both sides of the plate along with that drop ball. So a steady mix of a bunch of different pitches moving in different directions. Primarily a righty lineup for this Tennessee Lady Vol team. The third baseman, McKenna Gibson, coming in. And even 300 at the plate. And the pitch in for a strike. Here we go, my God! Very capable throw in the circle for Stanford. And on this staff, who saw Elena Vauder exit. It's going to be Krause along with Nigerie Kennedy, who has pitched this weekend. And we expect to potentially see her a little bit later tonight against Texas, as that will be a prime time matchup. Who gets in, connects the two out single to left. Good adjustment by McKenna Gibson on that swing. You can see her smiling as she heads down to first base. Doesn't get all of this pitch. It's another rise ball up and in on the hands. A good two strike location. But Gibson just muscles that one out into left field for a two strike base hit. Gibson three of four for hits have come with two outs. And so that sets up Sophia Nugent, the transfer from Oklahoma, hitting in the cleanup spot for Tennessee. Oh, 
And the pitch. And it's out and low for ball two. Well, this Lady Vol team, as you mentioned, had a pretty potent offense last year. Put up nearly seven runs a game, searching for their first against Stanford. And three balls and no strikes to Sophia Nugent. Taking all the way. Mentioned all the runs that Tennessee scored last year. They added a little bit more pop to the lineup, too, by getting the transfer. And Sophia Nugent hit seven home runs last season. Has four hits so far this year, all of them extra base hits. And Nugent pulls this one into left field and keeping the inning going with another base hit. So back to back, two out singles for the Lady Balls. Tennessee's just fighting off some of these inside pitches to the righties, getting enough of them to drop them out into the outfield. A very similar looking base hit to the one that we just saw from McKenna Gibson. Sophia Nugent does something similar, gets it in on the hands, but that last bit of extension and the strength that they are showing to be able to muscle those out into the grass. Well, Tennessee coming in with such high expectations, currently number two in the country, coming off their eighth Women's College World Series appearance. It was their first since 2015. And this group is feeling all the more seasoned and confident as Karen Weekly, the SEC Coach of the Year from 2023, knows that this bunch very well may have something even greater in store for this 2024 campaign. First pitch swing and Zeta Pooney sharply hits it. So everybody's pulling it to the left and base is loaded now for Tennessee. Quality at bats one after another. Zeta Pooney saw her teammates get jammed up the two prior at bats. So she goes up there, really opens up that front side and looks for something on the inside part of the plate. Drives it past Jade Berry over at third base. And already Stanford finding themselves in trouble. And not much more that Jessica Allister needed to see in the circle. And she's in that uh, little highlight reel right there, my younger sister, Allie Shipman. I decided oh. to get the mm. firsthand scouting report from somebody that's been yeah, in the batter's yeah, box. And she just said that that movement was some of the most wild pitches that she's actually ever seen moving in all different directions along with the velocity. You just do not see that very often. She can dominate. She showed us that last year. Coming up with a couple of losses already in the early part of the season. But that rise ball, I mean, look, 70 to 74 miles per hour? Consistently, consistently throwing that hard. And it's going to be an immediate quick adjustment for these Tennessee batters. Julia Katsoyanopoulos coming up with the bases loaded two away, going up against Nigeri Kennedy. Not an easy job. The sophomore with the pitch, and Kutsunianopoulos check swing there, and Kennedy comes in, takes care of business, ends the threat for the Lady Vols. That she has given up in an eight and a third already to start off this season. Fantastic numbers to look at for Peyton Gottschall as she'll go up against this Stanford lineup. And Taryn Kern, who leads it off, but if you didn't get a chance to tune in to yesterday, uh, Ali Kanashiro, the great catcher for the Cardinal, had a career day. We talked about it in the open in terms of the use of the long ball. Well, she sent out the park not one, not two, but three times <laughs> in one game. It was pretty incredible to watch Kanashiro up at the plate yesterday. Two two-run home runs, one three-run home run. And this one hits the transfer, Taryn Kern, in her sophomore season with the Cardinal, takes first base. So Peyton Gottschall, you talked about her and the different pitches now she gives. Right Hear her scouting report. It, it all relies on that spin moving in all directions of that strike zone. She's going to attack the zone, too. She's going to challenge these batters. She has added and worked on an off-speed throughout this offseason. And she's going to challenge the lefties inside. She is not afraid to work those curveballs in. Well, she's got a lefty at the plate here, and 
Kaylin Koch, who swings out on this one and misses. Strike one for the senior, hitting just under 400 coming into today's game. And had a strong opening weekend last weekend. As Stanford entering the season as the preseason favorites out of the Pac-12 in its final year. And what a brilliant year it was for Jessica Allister's crew who played for Stanford, now leading her alma mater in her seventh season as the head coach. Success that she's seen. She's made a couple of World Series appearances, appearances as a player and did so last year now as a coach. And the count draws full to Coke. The payoff. Swinging on, put it in the air, into left. Flies out and one down, Coke is retired. So here she is, Ali Kanashiro, flashback to yesterday. She was all over the rice ball in yesterday's game against Georgia Tech. They kept trying to attack her in the upper part of the zone, but her swing is so well suited to those pitches up that she's like, you know what, I can go yard on the pitches too. too. Good adjustability with her swing, using the knowledge that she gains when she's back there behind the dish for Stanford, using it to her advantage up at the plate. Well, you batted 1,000 yesterday in our game as they faced off against Georgia Tech. Ali Kanashiro was one of your impact players and boy did she ever deliver <laughs> and when I made that list too I was thinking of her just purely from a defensive standpoint because I think she is a game changer for Stanford even if it doesn't come up statistically on the box score but what she was able to do with her bat yesterday that's the type of leadership that Stanford is looking to see from her throughout the rest of the season right up her first three home runs of the season went four for four in that first game, even 500 on Thursday. This one, will it stay foul? Yes, but not getting to it in time. Is Bella Fall. Wonder if there was maybe a bit of miscommunication between the left side of the field for Tennessee, or maybe just trying to read where that ball was going to land. I thought that was a catchable ball with where it landed. Got Scholl, the one, two. Close, but just missing. And that left side of the infield is McKenna Gibson over at third and fall. The true freshman coming in. Where are they playing? And they're playing way back, respecting that power, <laughs> right? And this one lined out to center field, made good contact, but right at Malloy, two away. Good piece of hitting there and a good read by Malloy. Those line drives hit hard off of the bat are sometimes the most difficult for the outfielders to read. Now batting the first Doesn't have to move too much to make a catch on that one. But you saw McKenna Gibson over at third base for Tennessee. We've seen her primarily at second base to start off this season, making a move to put her over at third base to get Destiny Rodriguez in the lineup. Well, shift all the way around, you think about that. And Julia Kutsuyanopoulos, who we saw a lot behind the dish last year, but with the addition of Sophia Nugent, that changes things. And of course, Fall, we'll talk about her in a little bit. The shortstop, as this one tagged by Ava Gall, goes all the way back to the fence. That's going to score one run. Another one comes across in the bottom of the first. Stanford on the board, 2-0. Nice swing there by the freshman coming from the left side. This is one of those rise balls tailing up in a way, but because she's on the plate, she's able to get her barrel around this outside pitch and drive it out into the right center gap. Hit that one right on the money. Off now the bottom part the of that fence, out right field to get Stanford on the board early. Ava Gall, who came in with some praise as we talked with Jessica Allister, really liked the way that she approached the fall and 
it's paying off and carrying over into this season. Emily Jones, the center fielder, stands in with her teammate in scoring position. And Jones sees that in at 66 miles per hour for strike one. Shows bunt, lays it down. Gottschall gets to it in time and throws out the runner at first base. But the two run. Well, this area has been a terrific host to this ESPN event for a number of years. It keeps heating up and get better and better. And this is just an indication. Tennessee Stanford, two World Series teams from a season ago. Stanford with a 1-0 advantage as Destiny Rodriguez starts off the inning for the Lady Balls. I know the season's early, but Destiny Rodriguez has had the biggest hit of the Tennessee Lady Volunteer season so far. Last weekend facing Baylor, they were down to their final strike, down by one run. And Destiny Rodriguez comes up in a pinch hit situation, blasts a two run shot to put them up one, ultimately ends up being the game winner in that ball game. Well, picked up a couple of wins against the Baylor Bears last weekend. Half of the win total coming into this weekend's Invitational. And Baylor, another very good team as well. They've got a lot of returners from last season. Dariana Orm in the circle, Leah Binford back healthy for them. Shaylin Govan, a strong hitter for them as well. Coach Weekly said it was a great learning weekend for her Tennessee team. And leads off here with the walk to Destiny Rodriguez. Time now for today's Keys to the Game brought to you by Shriners Children's Hospital. Well, we knew this one was going to be a great matchup, but for Tennessee, when I'm looking at Stanford's pitching staff, what their offense has to do is string together quality at bats. We saw examples of that in the first inning. They just weren't able to push across a run. And for Stanford, it's limit the defensive miscues. That's what ended up getting them last night in the game against Florida State, had a couple of uncharacteristic errors in the infield. Those are some things that you have to clean up if you want to come out with some big wins against top 10 opponents. Well, the Stanford Cardinal, we saw them the pick up a win against Georgia Tech and then no let up as they faced off against Florida State, shut out by the Seminoles 4-0. And they come back today against another ranked opponent, but this is the reason why you want to play in preseason events like this is see where you stand, get an idea of what you got and who's got what. And try to improve on that. Alana Leach tries to lay down the butt instead, pops it up and one down. Not an easy pitcher to bunt off of, especially with everything moving so hard and up in the zone. You want to try to get on top of those bunts, get them down into fair territory, but Leach just gets a bit too far underneath that rise ball. The big out number one. Amanda Allen standing at first base as the pinch runner, looking on as the freshman Bella Fall, the nine hole hitter for Tennessee, first pitch swinging and fouls it off. Fall, who has drawn a lot of praise for her defensive skills, searching for her first hit of the season. And this one hits her. And Fall takes first base. Well, Sunday on ABC, the number one ranked South. Oh, the Lady Vols on the hardwood were in action last night against South Carolina. They fell at home to Dawn Staley's crew, Camila Cardozo. Had a double-double in her return back after playing with her home country. And an interesting situation now is a couple runners on 
And back to the top with Kiki Malloy. This is a matchup that you and I talked about, salivated about, <laughs> so excited about, and now we get it. Kiki Malloy versus Nigeri Kennedy. You get one of the best hitters in the country going up against one of the best pitchers in the country. These are the matchups that you absolutely live for if you're a softball fan. Can't wait to see where Nigeria decides to pitch Kiki because she has so many strengths all over the strike zone. If you miss over the heart of the plate, she is definitely going to make you pay. And we know Nigel likes to throw that rise ball. Is she going to continue to try to ride it up and underneath the hands for Kiki? Or will she bust out that off-speed pitch that we saw a little bit yesterday? <laughs> Malloy, an offensive juggernaut. Her dad, Lawyer Malloy, in the stands, watching on. Her sister's there with their looking on as well. Mira, checking out. Kiki comes from a very athletic family. A lot of success, obviously, her father played in the NFL for more than a decade. Her sister was a great softball player for the Washington Huskies. Her mother, an incredible and athlete as well. Say there. <laughs> <laughs> she was an all-American track runner at Washington. And this is a situation, one ball and two strikes, where Kiki Malloy goes, chases, and Kennedy wins that battle, going up with that rise. This is one of the matchups that we wanted to see. So let's see how Nigeria decides to attack. Kiki Malloy goes up in the zone, continues to pound with that rise ball. Kiki clearly with the game plan that she wanted to go after that pitch. That was that off-speed pitch. She tried to get in there, goes straight back to another rise ball up right at the helmet. Gets a huge strikeout of Malloy. Two out, two on. Riley West, and obviously every time Riley West has come up to the plate or quite often this season. She's found great success. Going yeah. up, giving chase, and that's something. If if you're a batter, how do you how do you adjust to that or try to lay off of it? There's two schools of thought when you are facing a rise ball pitcher. You either go up there and try to let it go, try to let those rise balls go past you for balls, or you try to go up there and hunt it. And you almost, there's a level of anticipation that comes with facing a rise ball like Kennedy has. You have to anticipate where the ball's going to end up because if you swing where you see it, you're going to miss underneath it all day long. Not going up. That high, but just throw that away <laughs> is Kennedy is working ahead in the count. And, you know, this is what was carried over from last year. I mean, one of the best in the nation in terms of ERA and strikeouts per seven innings. She sat down Malloy, the 2 2 to Riley West, the grounder over to third base, and the inning is over. So, Nigeri Kennedy, your all time leading scorer in Division I basketball, a career night, 49 points put up at home in that win. Just an incredible performance. She scored or assisted 79 points in last night's game, and I'm pretty sure the shot that broke the record yeah, was practically from half court yeah. in three. <laughs> so much fun to watch. Yeah, she's always jacking up 25, 30 <laughs> feet shots and making it look easy. I mean, the way that she has captivated the country with her play just falls right in line with how many fantastic stars we have seen across all fields of play in women's sports. It's been so much fun to document the careers of so many dynamic athletes as Allie Clements goes up, chases, and strikes out. And two down for Gottschall. And it's incredible to see no, what some of these players and the, the fan base that they've generated behind them, too. Nice looking rise ball there from Gottschall. Good late movement. That's when you see those swings and misses on the pitches that are way up and out of the zone. 
Kira Chan takes strike one, and then the addition, of course, of name, image, and likeness, NIL, seeing all the more that of what's possible in opening things up across collegiate athletic landscape. And this one by Fall has it pop off of her, and Kira Chan is aboard safely. We'll see how they score that one as that looked like a routine ground to her way, and it is an error, Chan aboard. Another hard hit ball off the no, bat, no, straight to Bella Fall. But because it was hit so hard, I don't think she was able to take that additional step forward to get that ground ball on the short hop. So it kind of eats her up a bit on that mid hop. And laying it down the bump and try to get on base for River Mailer. Not able. One of the most enjoyable weekends of the college softball season here at this invitational. And we saw a couple of uh, Olympians, our, our colleagues in there. Dancing around. Dancing the booth, around. Right? Michelle Smith, who was the brainchild who helped put this event together. And Jessica Mendoza, who will go down and always be remembered and known as a Stanford great. I'm sure she is tuning in and watching her alma mater right now. And fouled off by McKenna Gibson, a ball and two strikes to the third baseman. Remember, she had a single back at that first inning. Three hits so far this afternoon for the Lady Vols. That one, 72 miles per hour for the ball. Just your casual yeah. 72, Tiffany. Easy. And it does come out of her hand looking so effortless, too. Really good at bat here by McKenna Gibson. Not easy to lay off of those pitches because they have such sharp late break on them. And the velocity that she brings, too, it speeds up the batter. You have to make your decision on whether or not you're going to swing much earlier when it's coming in 72, 73 miles per hour. Gets that one past a diving tear, and Kern goes all the way to the warning track and fence. And a great piece of hitting there by McKenna Gibson for the double. That hit right there for McKenna Gibson is all a product of her taking the rise balls up and out of the zone, getting herself into this full count. Kennedy does not want to walk her, doesn't want to put her on base, so she's going to bring something into the zone. Look at the barrel angle coming down on that ball, too. Squares it up right on the money, out to the fence in center field, an easy stand-up double for Gibson. Gibson with her first extra base hit of the season. The dugout loves it. She will trot back there as Laura Mueller will come on to pinch run. And you see the information right there, that conversation that she's having with Chris Malvo, one of the assistants on staff, and sharing that with her teammate Zeta Puni, who's on deck. All about passing along what you're seeing up at the plate, because even if you're not up in the box, you can learn something from your teammates at bats. You can go up to the plate with an entire game's worth of knowledge when you step into that batter's box. Sophia Nugent was a part of that trio of base hits back in the first inning. Four for seven with runners in scoring position this season, including three doubles, but now Behind the count, one, two. And Nugent stepping back in. Kennedy readies the pitch. Inside, popped up, and Eva Gall is there. And the out. College basketball Saturday. We've got it coming your way on ESPN. Number nine, Duke and Florida State are at 2 Eastern. Then it's top 25, Kansas, Oklahoma. Finally, we finish it off with Kentucky and Auburn out of the SEC. That's at 6 Eastern. Should be another great afternoon of hoops and a sonic blockbuster.
like that foul ball might have gotten a piece of kind of Shiro back behind the plate. Nods her head saying that she's okay, but <laughs> Nigeri comes over to make sure yeah. that her catcher is all right after that foul tip. We can't talk enough about how great Kenoshiro is behind the plate because when you're receiving balls at 70 plus miles per hour consistently, you've got to be able to make sure that leather is right there to receive it. Another pop up in the infield and two away. To your point, Tiffany, with Allie behind the plate, the velocity that we love to see with Kennedy in the circle, not easy to receive, especially with the spin and the movement. So she's had to learn the direction in which Nigeri's pitches tend to move so that she can kind of get a leg up on that velocity. <laughs> Gold Glover behind the dish and received that 73 mile per hour pitch as she returns from that Women's College World Series team. They graduated a lot of experience so in parts, they hit a reset button, but when you make it all the way to OKC with a fantastic pitcher and Kennedy and Kenoshiro behind the plate and experience, it's gonna prove gold for you as the season continues. And I really think the biggest question marks about Stanford coming into this season were, were more at their offense. Trying to figure out how they're going to get the run production behind Kennedy in the circle. And they sure got it yesterday yeah. from Kenoshiro up at the plate. And Coach Alistair just really excited about this entire season with this squad. But was really looking forward to these games in particular to learn even more about this team because they did graduate some great sen seniors for Stanford, seniors that played for a long time in the program, helped them get to the Women's College World Series last year. So trying to navigate who's gonna work best in certain situations, what defensive lineup do they wanna put out there, which offensive lineup do they wanna put out there, all of those things. Every coach here is learning about their teams here in February. Taylor Gindelsberger and Lee Schultz and Emily Young, part of those fifth years, and graduated and moved on to 2-2 and staying alive is Kutsianopoulos. Looks like that foul ball might have gotten a piece of our home plate umpire back there. He gives a thumbs up that he's <laughs> all right. Robbie Guess behind the plate. Chelsea Clark over at first base. And Marty Abazian over at third. And that ends the inning. A letter runner left on base and then three straight retired by Kim. Easy is it? Florida State trailing by four, top seven, bases loaded, two outs. <laughs> and uh, you just never know with the Seminoles. The <laughs> you got a freshman up at the plate, big time situation, top of the seventh, two away. Jason E. Beach him up. She's already had some clutch hits in this ball game. Gonna try to do it again here against Taylor Tinsley in the circle for UCLA. Oftentimes, Florida State has always found that kind of magic, and they leave you always wondering, guessing, got to watch, got to see what's going to happen. All right, Brady helped to lift this group as well, the reigning Pac-12 player of the year and batting champion, a couple of home runs already for the Bruins. Back in our field. Taryn Kern leading it off, a one-two count. So this is the bonus kind of action that you'll get all weekend long here from Clearwater. Got every pitch covered. And Beecher puts it on the ground, and that's going to end the ball game. But 24 runs combined between Florida State and UCLA, and the Bruins come out victorious. It's a good win for UCLA, too, because they struggled the last weekend against Texas, had some losses that they were hoping to recover from here in Clearwater, but not easy to do when you're facing top competition left and right, and that was a back and forth game. Florida State ultimately scored first in that game, kept going back and forth, and UCLA with a big top 10 win.
Well, some discussion here from Jessica Allister as Taryn Kern may have been clipped by that pitch. Did she lean in a little bit? Yeah, it looks like she. It looks like she's already starting over mm -hmm. out into that area over the batter's box because of where she sets her feet up. Her toes are right on that chalk line. That elbow's hanging over the zone a bit. So I think that's a good call by our home plate umpire to keep her in the box. Already five hit by pitches this season. The last one coming back in the first inning as Taryn Kern, who comes over from Indiana after having a sensational year, is still getting comfortable in the Stanford uniform. And Gottschall says, thank you, ma'am. See you later. Sit down. We said back in the first inning that Peyton Donshall is not going to be afraid to challenge these lefty batters on the inside part of the plate. She takes a bit off of this pitch. It's a 59 mile per hour pitch. Taryn Kern well out in front with that slight speed change. A good looking off speed from Peyton Gottschall. And what a pickup she was last year. And we've talked about among the storylines coming into this year, Tennessee graduating their ace, their All-American, and Ashley Rogers and Gottschall helped to relieve Rogers at time to be a nice balance and pick up wins in the process. Last season, 16 and two for her 2023 campaign. Really stepped up in some huge moments for Tennessee last year. Sharply hit over to first base, handled by Kutsiganopoulos, and two down. And she's a pitcher that just has a lot of game experience, as you mentioned, transferring over from Bowling Green, where she had two consecutive seasons where she threw over 200 innings pitch. So a lot of experience under her belt, has that World Series run under her belt, too, coming into this season, and a lot of fire. She's a great competitor out there in the circle. And their first strike to Ali Kanashiro. I think Karen Weekly got a chance to see just what she could do. Had a no hitter in that Knoxville regional last year. You talked about some of those big moments, knowing that it would build her up for another year in a Lady Ball uniform as one, two, three inning for Peyton Gottschall game in favor of the Stanford Cardinal. Their head coach, Jessica Allister, joining us now. A couple of games under your belt. And what have you learned or seen from your team so far this weekend? Yeah, I think we're doing a good job of competing. You know, I think we're putting aggressive swings on good pitches. Um, I think we're learning defensively as we go. We're learning on the bases as we go. We're battling like crazy in the circle. So. Um, impressed with what I've seen so far and really proud of them. And coach, coming into this weekend, you had said that you were really looking forward to seeing what some of your newcomers and your freshmen could do. So how big was it for Ava Gall to come through the way that she did with that double? Yeah, you know, it's a great swing and she's been putting great swings on the ball. So um, it's awesome in this situation to come up and, you know, take an aggressive hack. All right, thanks coach. We appreciate the time. Thank you. And well, she said, hey, look, there's that interesting mix that we have of a young and old providing some more versatility and depth. And this freshman four that's new to the farm has added a little bit here and there. And you asked her about Ava Gall, but delivering the only run of the ball game thus far. And when you've got Nigeria Kennedy in the circle, sometimes that's all she that's needs. That's all you need. <laughs> She's been impressive so far too, but Tennessee's strung together some pretty quality at bats at times. They started off last inning with that leadoff double, but just weren't able to get anything moving. That's an inning that I have highlighted, and we'll see how it turns out as this game goes on. But it seemed like that was an opportunity to try to get a run across after Gibson had hit that double to start things off. And we talked about the number of runs put up per game, an average of close to seven last year. One of the indicators that Karen Weekly is always looking for is, hey, how do you produce and how do you capitalize with Runners on scoring position as Destiny Rodriguez sent it to the outfield and went away. Well, this weekend, MetLife Stadium will host the NHL's next two outdoor games on ABC and ESPN Plus. Saturday, the Flyers square off against the Devils at 8 Eastern. And then Sunday, it's the Rangers and Islanders at 3 Eastern. Well, a beautiful day to be outdoors here and watch some of the brightest stars in softball shine. First pitch swing and throw. Alana Leach in this one. 
opposite field double. She's standing up at second base and in scoring position. Another example where this Tennessee offense has been able to put some good swings on Kennedy in the circle. Alana Leach gets extended on this pitch low and outside, right about thigh high. That's the one that you want to go after when you're facing Kennedy. Gets all of this pitch, drives it over the head of Allie Clements out, excuse me, Kira Chan out in left field for a stand up double, one away. Now, this is the time where you need those quality at bats. Try to move that runner over an additional 60 feet. One for seven today for Tennessee with runners in scoring position. And Bella Fall back at the plate. Hit by a pitch her last time up. And Kaylee Taylor, Katie Taylor, the pinch runner, is standing at second fall, looking to drive home her first run of this young season. And a defensive shift or change, rather, for the Stanford Cardinal as Caitlin Lim trots out to right field. So after the defensive change, Fall steps back in. The pitch. Swung on, a nice glove work by Jade Berry at third base. Made that play look easy. Good collection, delivers, and Taylor has remained at second. Not an easy ground ball to grab either. She's a bit off balance when she finally fields this one, just reaching out at the last minute to get that ball in her glove. That's one of those ground balls too where as an infielder, you think about diving for a second, but when you dive, you're probably not going to have time to throw across the diamond. So very smart that she stayed on her feet to get that second out. The poise and presence of the freshman over there at third base. Coming up with the second out and something that Again, Jessica Allister is very confident in and her youngsters, Kiki Malloy, for the second time against Kennedy. Last time she struck out. Got around that rise ball, the last at bat. And facing opponents with runners in scoring position, two for 23. But how much do you look forward to this challenge when you put yourself back in a uniform? I think you've seen me this entire game. I've been smiling the, it, the whole time. Like I said, this was the game on the calendar that I circled immediately. These two teams going head to head. And a lot of it too, because uh, coming into the season, these teams ranked two and three in several different polls because of the strengths that they have in the circle and offensively. Just so much fun to see these te two teams match up early in February, and I've said it before, I'll say it again, it truly does feel like the postseason here. On well, the 2-2, two -two, hanging off of it. And Kiki Malloy now has a full count. Karen Weekly will get a chance to chat with her on the other side. And a contract extension to keep her in Knoxville through 2028. And Jason again, Kennedy pumped up afterward. She knows if she can sit down the offensive juggernaut, it means. Between number two Tennessee and the ninth ranked Stanford Cardinal as we move to the bottom of the fourth. Joining us now, the Tennessee head coach, Karen Weekly. We appreciate your time for being here, coach. And obviously, uh, Peyton Gottschall has gotten off to a very good start this season. What have you seen from her, and how would you grade her so far? Yeah, Peyton pounds the zone. You know that, you know, whatever you call, you're going to get it there. I think she's probably coming around the zone a little bit too much. Uh, I think we need to make them stretch the zone a little bit more. Um, I think she can get some more swings and misses doing that today.
And coach, you guys have been able to put some good swings on Kennedy in the circle, been able to get some people over to second base, but what does your offense need to do to get them around to score? Just get that consistently. You know, we'll have a really good at bat where, you know, we're, we're picking better pitches, kind of seeing the top half, making that adjustment in our swings. And then we'll have one where we're chasing. So, you know, you got to put together three, four good bat at bats in a row in order to score off of her. All right, thanks coach. We appreciate the time. Thank you. 2023 SEC Coach of the Year. And the conversations that have been had with this group to try to build upon the success they saw as SEC regular season and tournament champions for the first time in program history at Women's College World Series. They were on the brink of that champ series and they want to build on that. And conversations, quite honestly, that they have a lot about, hey, let's let's face that moment. We had a great year last year. What are we going to do this year? When you get that close, you get a taste for it. And you want to immediately go back and you try to think, what can we do to take that extra step? Because there's no doubt when you talk to somebody like Akiki Malloy, her ultimate goal is to win a national championship. So what is it going to take for this team to not just get back to the Women's College World Series, but take that extra step to win a national championship for the first time for Tennessee? Ava Gall, who had the RBI double to put up the only run of the game, is retired on that ground or the short. We talked to Coach Weekly, too, before this tournament, just about the topic of managing expectations coming into the season. I think same could be said for Stanford as well, managing expectations. You come off of that season where you make an incredible run, you make it to the World Series. Oftentimes, as players, you come into the next year trying to do too much or trying to recreate what you did last year. Looks like a foul ball is going to be called. And sometimes even if you have the same players and a same, similar looking roster, the team could be very different the next year, maybe a different style of play. And for both of these teams, after graduating, a couple of seniors trying to figure out what's going to be the best combination for them. The 2023, just an incredible year for the Tennessee Lady Volunteers. Ashley Rogers, NFCA Pitcher of the Year. Talk about a good rise ball. Ashley Rogers <laughs> yeah, sure yeah. had one. <laughs> that indeed, and I'm sure all the opponents, especially in the SEC, are grateful that they don't have to see her week in and week out anymore. More serious. After series, is Emily Jones battling up there, staying alive, fouling off a couple of pitches. And that's what's so much fun in covering these programs. First time in 19 years, you mentioned, hey, Stanford making it back to the Women's College World Series and Jessica Alistair building something special on the farm at her alma mater. This is exactly what she came in to do. And what she, Coach Allister has been able to do in a short amount of time, too. Back in 2019, that was the first time they had made it back to the postseason since 2013. So she's really built back up that program. Jones hits it off of herself. It's foul, so she'll come back and swing again. Getting her steps in. This yeah, she is. A couple of foul balls down there. And since she was still in the box when that made contact with her, gets to come back in. Karen Weekly and Karen's game book out with her. Wondering if she was arguing maybe if that was a bun attempt? Is that what she's coming out to argue there? Well, the umpires are going to huddle up about it. Take a look at it here. Yeah, you saw her crossover foot was out of the box when she made contact with that. And now if the umpire calls that, that the slapper was out of the box when she made contact with the ball with two strikes, then she would be out. But I believe he was calling it a foul ball when it hit her after it hit the ground. So Jones stays alive. The 2-2 two -two pitch from Gottschall. Pop 
popped up. Towering, will it stay in fair territory? Yes, but Nugent could come up with it. Right on that fence It may have been <laughs> grazing that net. So, Emily Jones say, let's run it back again. Great placement, so close, ball four. App. The Doors played Tennessee close the last time they played. But Kia Jackson though is one of those tough customers. Well you heard Coach Weekly talk about trying to expand that zone for Gottschall, that was a really close pitch that Initially, I Aborted thought she had a runner-up. I, yeah. I, thought, I thought they had a runner-up, rung up on that pitch on the outside part of the plate, and a big smile on Gottschall's <laughs> face, too, after she didn't get the call. She still continues to work that outer edge of the plate. One, two, to Jade Berry. Swing and a miss, and the strikeout, the third of the game for Peyton Gottschall. That's where the veteran presence comes into play for Peyton Gottschall. You don't get a call the at-bat before, but you don't let it phase you. You just continue to pound the strike zone. Great looking pitch on the outside part of the plate. It's Jade Berry swinging there. Whoa. Coming over from Bowling Green and throughout her career, she was among the nation's strikeout leaders. Since she's taken the circle at the collegiate level and now she'll see a pinch hitter for Stanford as Jonna Schroeder is at the plate. Schroeder, the junior. Sides, we're gonna miss. Bit, a, bit of a hesitant swing there from Schroeder too. That's just a product of that late movement that Gottschall has when she's throwing those rise balls. For a second you try to lay off, last minute you try to swing. Ooh, foul ball over towards that Stanford dugout. Looks like everybody's okay, <laughs> although her teammate Kira Chan over on deck is telling her the other way, hit the other way. <laughs> Just a bit of encouragement from the on-deck circle. The 2 and taking off and stealing second base is Emily Jones. She's safe, she's in scoring position. Good jump over at first base here. You can see that split second that Sophia Nugent took to try to frame that pitch, I believe is what allowed Jones to dive in safely at second base because it's a perfect throw right on the money. Good tag by the freshman and Bella Fa just a bit too late. Well, she wants that pitch. It's ever so <laughs> close. And I think the Lady Vols fans thought, okay, this is it. It's, it's close, it's a really close pitch, but he's been consistent on that side of the plate. It's only three balls there, so going back is Schroeder. Remember, Schroeder had a home run yesterday, but she'll get one more pitch from Gottschall. He's had a strikeout in this situation with runners in scoring position each time she's been in it this season. And let's see what happens here, the payoff. And that's it, strikeout, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Peyton Gottschall as the heart of the order due up for Tennessee when we come back.
difficult is it for you to try to follow that up the next year? It's not easy because when you walk onto the field now for this year, you've got a giant target on your back. And I guarantee all of the teams here, when they saw Stanford was going to be at the tournament, the first player that they did scouting on was Nigeri Kennedy because you got to figure out how to try to hit some of the rise balls that she's bringing in there. And so for her, it was an adjustment to try to learn maybe a little something new this year. And that's why we've seen her bust out that off-speed pitch. And you don't always have to throw it for strikes, but when you show it just enough, it's in the back of the minds of these hitters. They know that there's a possibility that you could change speeds on them. That went in there for a strike to Riley West. And in talking with Coach Allister, yes, she did great things in her first year with Stanford, but what she loved about her even more is just the work ethic that she has, the desire, the drive to be better. Just really excited to see her grow throughout her career too. That off-speed pitch that we mentioned, she threw a couple of really nice ones last night against Florida State, and she doesn't throw, enough, throw it enough for a batter to go up there and sit that pitch either. So she really forces opponents to have to make adjustments on that pitch up in the zone, try to be disciplined, not swinging at the one that's too high, but going after the one that just hits the top part of the strike zone. And you see Tennessee throughout this ball game trying to ride that line. Full count to West, and that change up just as you mentioned on cue, the off speed retires West. It's just so filthy when she throws it. 59 miles per hour as a batter, you're getting geared up for that 72, 73 mile per hour pitch. And then when she releases it, it's way too late for you to try to make an adjustment on your swing. Sometimes as a batter, when a pitcher throws an exceptional pitch, you just got to tip your hat. McKenna Gibson, two for two in this ball game, singled her first time up, doubled in her last at bat. But you go back to that third inning, you said, hey, she led off the inning, but Gibson stood cold there at second as they couldn't move her around. Gibson, again, way out in front of that one. Miss Kennedy, keeping them off balance. So now you're at two strikes, so you're thinking, is she gonna throw it again, or is she gonna throw me the high heat? And there's such a vast difference, you almost have to pick one. This one timed up, sent it into center field line, right field rather, lined up for two down. Watching her continue to throw that changeup is just getting me more and more excited up here in the booth. You can tell how much passion she has when she executes that pitch, too. It's an immediate smile looking around to all of her teammates, just adding that extra element to what she already throws, which we know is so electric. And then she's able in the offseason to, to add a complete change in speed. And Tori Nyberg, the pitching coach who is managed one of the best staffs. We look, remember last year with Kennedy and Vauder, and now it's just a luxury to have a player like Kennedy who has put in the work, the preparation, to make herself all the more dangerous when she throws <laughs> it, that pitch. It almost looks like a different game plan for Nigeria as this game goes on, too. You're starting to see her sprinkle in those change-ups so much more often here in the top of the fifth inning than we've seen throughout the rest of this ball game. And she's throwing them for strikes, mm -hmm. too. So at some point, will we see a batter for Tennessee maybe take a chance and anticipate that she's going to throw an off-speed pitch? Do you go up there and look for that now that she's shown that she's throwing it quite a bit? I feel like I've changed my game plan up here in the booth a couple of times just in this inning alone, because earlier I was saying you don't necessarily need to throw it for a strike. I thought it was a great conversation between Michelle Smith and Jessica Mendoza on the game last night, having this exact same conversation about busting out that off-speed pitch. But now that she's throwing it more often, do you go up there and look for that one? Gets her with the hit. 
Jitschel, we saw her strike out the last two batters. She faced, she's back in the circle to see eight, nine, and then back to the top of the order for the Stanford Cardinal. A great duel here on this Friday. As a cut shot to first base and just snatched out of the air by Kutsi Yiannopoulos. She was defending herself more than anything, <laughs> but snagged it down. And she was playing up in front of first base. And remember to last season, Julia was back behind the plate for Tennessee, moving on over to first base. This one a hot shot off of the bat of Kira Chan. Hit right on the money, throws her gloves up, snags it out of the air. Peyton Gotchel fired up after she made that incredible play. Coach Weekly has called Julia Katsoyanopoulos a defensive wizard no matter where they put her. That was a good one there. I think the term that she used last season was like, hey, she's the unsung hero just because <laughs> she learned a completely new position. But Coach Weekly says, I know she has the ability to do it. She's got the IQ. She can figure it out and did so in very impressive fashion. We talked about receiving the pitches and from Ashley Rogers or Carlin Pickens, who's throwing heat along with Peyton Gottschall. She played that one off too, making it look yes, easy on that hard hit line drive. <laughs> Defense, I know it's something that you love to see. And it, we've talked about it before, but I love to see the spectacular plays like we just saw, but also just the routine plays too. That's what really stands out to me in those little things that make such a big difference in these matchups and really in, in any game. Teams are looking to take advantage of any opportunity that you give them, whether it's a walk, a hit by pitch, or even a mistake, a miscue made out defensively. Here's the deal. Peyton Gottschall has been wanting that outside part, just has not gotten it. Full count. The pitch to River Mailer. And she did not go around, third base umpire says, and so she's aboard with a one-out walk. Tries to surprise River Mailer a bit by working that pitch on the inside part of the plate. Doesn't get the call, but I like the location there, keeping those lefties in check on that side of the, side of the plate because they like to put their toes right up on that chalk line to challenge, especially righty pitchers, to throw it inside. But you know that Peyton Gottschall's up for it. And her first walk given up of the season to River Mailer and back to the top with Taryn Kern. Kern still waiting to get going. You mentioned she's a player who second team All-American, Big Ten the player of the year a season ago. Coming over. Looking at the pace of this game, and we talked about the pitch clock before, but the way Peyton Gottschall works is very quick. <laughs> she gets out there and she gets after it. She does not waste a lot of time. We, we talked coming into this season about what sorts of adjustments that especially the pitchers were going to have to make, batters as well. But I'd imagine that it wasn't uh, much of an adjustment for Peyton <laughs> Gottschall because she's always worked at a pretty quick pace out there. Three balls and a strike to Taryn Kern. Pitch clock debuting at our event. ACC will institute this year. ACC will do it next year. That's the conference in which Stanford's going to join next season with the realignment all across the country, along with Cal. SMU that we're going to go to the Atlantic Coast Conference. Full count and foul. Everybody watch out in the stands, and that one came hard and fast. Hope everyone's okay as the onlookers and fans seem to be okay, but always got to keep your head on the swivel. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they took some notes from the catch that Julia Katsoyanopoulos made already in this <laughs> inning, and they dove out of the way of that one. Back-to-back -back walks. 
for Stanford. Well, Sunday on ABC, the number one ranked South Carolina game. How about Stanford's gonna host this final tournament in the conference? And the pinch hitter in first pitch swing in, and Kalen Cole, can they turn the double play? Yes, they do! Huge defensive end of the inning here, thanks to the Tennessee Lady Balls infield. Change-ups, or is she gonna go back to the velocity? Well, since entering the ball game back in the first inning, coming in for Reagan Krause after just facing five batters, Kennedy has only given up a couple of hits to this potent Tennessee lineup. And it's the immediate outs that she gets after Tennessee gets a hit. You look back to the third inning, started off with a leadoff double from McKenna Gibson. It's three straight flyouts right after that. You look to the fourth inning, a double by Alana Leach, immediately a ground ball and then a strikeout right after that. Waiting on that one, sending it in the center field. And the batter is retired, one down. Another off-speed pitch, 53 miles per hour. 1-1 one, one count, Zeta Puni decided to go after it. Wasn't on time for it, but tried to make that last minute adjustment with her swing. When we talked about just that off-speed preparation in the off-season for Nigel Kennedy, but also doing things to work on her endurance because this is a long season and over the next few months, she's gonna be put to work to try to help Stanford make back-to-back -back Women's College World Series appearances because everyone's trying to take down the three-time champ, Oklahoma. And the question is, who's gonna do it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it starts with a pitcher in the circle, and you take somebody like an Ivory Kennedy, absolutely can go head-to-head -head with Oklahoma. We saw that last year. But it's a matter of being able to be as healthy and as prepared as possible when that postseason does come around. Popped up, Kaneshiro collects it to a win. Well, we've talked about the pitch clock, and today's pitch clocks are provided by Whistle stop. We talked about the usage for Peyton Gottschall, how quickly she's moved. Probably hadn't even had to worry about it, but the pace of play that we have seen in games that have gone to extra innings, you think about just how it shaved off time because of using the pitch clock. Well, and a big part of having the pitch clock was allowing for the electronic devices in the dugout, too, to be able to call pitches and to call defensive alignments. That's something that's also new to this season. Both of those, I believe, come hand in hand. That was nasty there. Destiny Rodriguez just, just kind of smirking off the 0-2. Stanford faithful getting behind Kennedy here. One and a one, two, three inning. The pitch to Rodriguez swung on, sent into left center, giving chase, and Emily Jones chucks it down and comes up with it. Three up, third, and we saw an excellent showing from Wisconsin in the opening game yesterday against Georgia. They were battling back and forth between the Bulldogs. Ultimately, it was Georgia with the walk-off win in the 10th inning to beat the Badgers. They've got some good bats in that lineup. Yvette Healy is very hopeful for her group out of the Big Ten to try to compete. And again, the theme that we keep talking about, because this was a conversation that we had with all the 16 coaches, is the measuring stick that this weekend shows you where you are, how you compete, how you respond to adversity, and more. You get to learn about your team, too, and, and what their makeup's going to look like, what the offense is going to look like. And we joked about it yesterday, but Coach Healy thought that they were going to be more speed and small ball and gap to gap. And they've shown a lot of home run power already. Brooke Kuffel hit four home runs in opening weekend last weekend. We already saw another one hit here today. 
Popped up by Ava Gall, so a couple of infield pop-ups for Stanford and two down. And I'm just curious to know, like, when you were playing at Tennessee, when did you feel like, hey, we found our identity? I, I know who we are. It, I kind of had a good idea of what our team was going to look like just in the fall, especially with some of the players that I got an opportunity to play with. Right up the middle, base hit with two outs for Emily Jones. There were a lot of speed players on our lineups. I, I think back to players like Raven Siobhan and Kat Dotson that were there to set the table. Kelly Grieve, a lot of triple threat lefties that were right at the top of our order. And then we tried to stack in the power bats between Lauren Gibson and myself to try to be able to drive them in. And so we knew that that was going to be our identity. We were gonna cause chaos on the base paths. We were gonna to try to drive runners in when they got over into scoring position. Plus, we had some phenomenal pitchers in the circle between Ivy and Ellen Renfro. So we kind of knew what our team was going to look like. I would say for the first three years that I played there, my senior year, we graduated a lot of those seniors, so it was trying to figure out what our new identity was going to look like, and we were much more of a power-hitting team. Kylie Chung, first pitch swing of the pitch hitter, sends that one foul. So then when we talk to the coaches, they seem to be like cautiously optimistic or, or just slow to give us kind of any indication of you know, what they think their team is at that point. You can speculate, though, as much as you want to about what you've seen in the fall and even what you've seen in the in the January scrimmages that you've had against each other, but you never truly know what's going to happen until you get out there and start facing a team in a different jersey. Who's going to emerge? Because maybe there's somebody that has been flying under the radar that does something exceptionally well in those first couple of games and changes the way that you formulate the offense or the defense or the pitching staff. So such an exciting time for all of these teams to be facing top level competition. These are two of the five teams that marched their way to Oklahoma City last season. And the 2-1 pitch to pinch hitter Kylie Chung, and it's even now at two apiece. Hits have been hard to come by for Stanford. Emily Jones with that single. That was the first hit since the first inning. This one lifted high into left field, and they're going to strand the runner to end the inning. But the Stanford Cardinals still holding tight to that one nothing lead. We're gonna see another Nigeri Kennedy, Kiki Malloy matchup in this inning as back into the ball game is Alana Leach, the freshman out of the Woodlands, Texas. Twin sisters on the team as well. And if that Leach name sounds familiar, it's because her older sisters, Aubrey and Kelsey played softball in Knoxville. starting off this inning. She had that really nice double against Kennedy back in the fourth inning. Went with a pitch and drove it the other way. Going to try to set the table here in the top of the seventh. Leach flying in the center, charging, and what a diving grab made by the center fielder, Emily Jones. Wow. And hope she's okay after that one because what a fantastic effort. A spectacular play out in center field. Has to charge this one extremely hard. She calls it, goes completely parallel with the ground when she leaps to catch this one. Hits the, gr hits the ground hard. Nigeri just loves to see the effort, see her defense make for hoops. The pinch hitter. Gabby Leach, the twin sister, now at the plate, standing in from the left side is Kennedy, who had retired the last nine batters 
He's trying to continue that trend here, but I love the leadership that we saw from Kennedy too, just like everyone on the team was interested in making sure that Emily Jones was okay, but Kennedy was fired up after that catch. Wanted to also make sure her teammate was okay. Getting a quick scouting report in when the pinch hitter comes in, but just that catch and the, and the unbelievable effort too. When you're in a tight game like this, I, I've talked about the routine plays, but sometimes you got to come out with a spectacular play to keep your team in it. You mentioned these two teams last met seven months ago. Semifinals of the Women's College World Series. In fact, that's the last time that Tennessee has been shut out when they faced off against Oklahoma. Last season, only three times all of last year. This a new season. Nigeria Kennedy up to the same old thing, though. She's looked great. And Leach did not commit, according to the third base umpire. Coach Allister and the Stanford <laughs> Cardinal fans. Can't believe, Can't believe it. Believe it. <laughs> the 2 1 to Gabby Leach. Swing and a miss. Not easy to come in as a pinch hitter and adjust to the velocity right away. Kiki Malloy standing on deck, looking on. Gabby Leach holds off, full count. We'll pay off and it's fouled. Leach will get another crack at it. Watching on as her team is being put to the test in this duel against Stanford. Yeah! Great battle here, too, by Kathy Leach standing in there, trying to get her timing down with that high velocity rise ball, full count, knowing that Kennedy does not want to put anybody on base in front of Kiki Malloy. Standing tough and tall in there. You can see even that hand motion too. She's trying to work on that adjustment of getting on top of the ball a bit more. As a hitter, it almost feels like you have to over-exaggerate the adjustment to execute it when you actually swing. Again, makes contact over to the shortstop with the mailer and two down. So now the Lady Vols are... He has just continued to attack that upper part of the strike zone with that high velocity rise. That rise high and tight inside. Remember, Kiki Malloy, we mentioned, currently tied for the most home runs. The next home run she hits will make her the all-time leader in Tennessee, but Marjorie Kennedy, who has had her number today, only allowed two hits since coming in relief. Good intentional swing adjustment there by Kiki getting on top of that ball. All three pitches in this at bat have been rise balls for Marjorie. Sails into the net. Good postseason feeling right here. The 2 2. It's high. 